BFM 89.9. BFM 89.9. I'm Audrey Raj here to bring you a quickie from the World Cup. Wow, it's been raining goals at the World Cup over the weekend. <laughs> Five by the Dutch against the Spaniards. And then again, you know, Costa Rica, three goals against Uruguay and more this morning. France, 3-0 against Honduras. Now that, of course, two came from Karim Benzema, who was like this close to getting a hat-trick if it was not for goal line technology coming and saving the day. Shooting the ball across the line only to be tapped back in by the Honduran goalkeeper with the referee calling goal line technology into play. And what did it show? goal. The ball obviously crossed the line even though I hear some British commentators say that uh, it did not happen. So, that was a first for goal line technology at this World Cup. There was another first today. It was the fastest ever own goal scored at the World Cup. Two minutes, eight seconds was all it took for Bosnia to score an own goal against Argentina. And then comes Lionel Messi to the rescue. All of a sudden, he like woke up in the second half and he showed his magic floating away for an individual effort to make it 2-0 to Argentina before a consolation from Bosnia five minutes from time to make that final score 2-1 to Argentina. And there was heartbreak for the Ecuadorians as they fell 2-1 to Switzerland and they fell so painfully 23 seconds before the end of time and Switzerland substitute Haris Seferovic comes in to save the day. So that's three points to Switzerland as well. 2-1 win over Ecuador. And you know what? More games coming up tonight. Hopefully more goals as well. We've got Ghana versus USA, Iran versus Nigeria, and of course the big one Germany versus Portugal the question is will Cristiano Ronaldo be fit for the match and of course speaking of gorgeous men here comes Sherrod Kutin Good morning, I'm Sharad Kutin and welcome to BFM's Morning Headlines. It's the 16th of June. It's World Cup season, of course, so those pictures there, uh, they're all over the papers. But uh, more importantly, is this story down here. Yes, Malaysians are joining the global jihad in Syria in large numbers. 30 to be exact, could be more. Why are they attracted? Apparently because they're being told that they're to protect and save Sunni Muslims. A very disturbing trend uh, we had over the weekend of course news that a Malaysian suicide bomber took out some 25 elite troops in Syria the first Malaysian involved in a suicide bombing in Syria not a great achievement if you're thinking about uh, helping peace in that land but here the Malay Mail it's treason says the ex-IGP of militants in the army so uh, some concern I think uh, in the our forces about who is being recruited and uh, why Sina Harian has that story as well Kambali Mandidara, a return to the bloodbath with images here, if you could see, that were all over Twitter over the weekend. Uh, very disturbing. Also slightly disturbing is the fact that a lot of pixelation going on with flags. Yes, flags, not uh, the images of dead bodies, but flags being pixelated. Not quite sure why Sina Harian chose to do that. Also, they seem to have not read much of the media and are unsure about whether the ISIS is Sunni or Shia. And of course, uh, it's very clear that they are Sunni. That's what they claim. Utusan has hijacking as its story. We remember a couple of months ago, we had a hijacking in this Straits of Malacca. Yet another hijacking, 700,000 liters of diesel. Was this an inside job as the last one was? Well, we wait to see what the results of an in the investigation are. The Sun has this story. Has the union hijacked mass? You know, are they going to hold it to ransom as they have many times as that struggling national carrier tries to restore fortunes to the very red balance sheet that they have. So that is deputy head of the Public Accounts Committee, Tan Seng Yao from the DAP, saying that the unions are obstructive. They're not helping the situation. The star has this story. It's the El Nino effect. Yes, folks, it's back. The last time it was here with us, it was very disruptive. We had drought, we had water rationing. Are we looking at another season of water rationing in store? Now, along with that is this, 75 dead from dengue. Not very good news. And I guess we'll look to the Ministry of Health to tell us what's going to be their game plan for the rest of the season. And the phrase of the day is Mandidara, bloodbath, a bloodbath that Malaysians want to partake in 
It's sad. It's curious. I can't begin to imagine why they want to do it. But there you have it, folks. Mandi Dara is the word of the day. Have a great day. I'm Sharad Kutin. You've been listening to BFM's Morning Headlines, BFM 89.9, The Business Station.